Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Wybot, and welcome, welcome to the Black Temple. We have a lot of bosses for you to down, and you can get some loots. So, the first one on the list is High Warlord Nagentus. Now, his only real ability that's a problem is Tidal Shield. That's more of an inconvenience than anything else. It makes him, it's like a big, long pally bubble. It makes him invulnerable for a certain period of time, and then after that you can just resume DPS and kill him. He is a simple tank and spank fight. Second boss of the instance is Supremus in the uh, Illidari uh, Courtyard here, or the Black Temple Courtyard. So, he is another simple tank and spank fight. The one thing you want to look out for is the fire that he will spawn underneath you, and also you want to keep in mind that he will punch you at some point, possibly several times during the fight, so you'll be knocked back a little bit. This is mostly an inconvenience, but you could be punted into a big chain swarm of ads, which maybe could be lethal. Not likely, but it would certainly be a big inconvenience. So next up we have the Shade of Akama. This is the, uh, when you go inside the Black Temple, this is the first room on the right. Uh, I've taken the liberty of clearing out all the initial trash. You speak to Akama to start the fight, and then you go and you attack the uh, casters that are channeling the uh, Shade of Akama. Once they're all dead, he will come and attack Akama. Ads will spawn. Focus on the uh, Shade of Akama, DPS him down to nothing. And then once you are finished, the uh, ads will all be on your side. Pretty simple fight. Once you're done with the Shade of a Comma, keep right and go up the stairs to Gorfin's Vigil. And his actual balcony is directly above the uh, Reflectionary, where he fought the Shade of a Comma. So you just AoE down his four guards that are there. I cleared out all the trash before this and just didn't include it in the video, because trash is trash. So then you just get those guards down, and then... Terran Gorfiend himself, when it's just one person, he is just a simple tank and spank fight. He spawns some orbs that uh, do a little bit of damage, but it's nothing to worry about. Just go through your regular Shadow Priest DPS rotation and take him down. Shouldn't... I don't think it should be much of a problem for uh, any class. I don't think I had to heal on this particular fight. So, simple tank and spank.
once Gorfiend is dead, go back through the uh, Gorfiend's Vigil, head down the stairs, keep right, go through the broken Drana area, and uh, then you'll come to the Halls of Anguish. Head down the stairs, and you'll face Gurtog Bloodboil, who is a tough mm -hmm. SOB to kill. He hits like a freight train. And he was originally supposed to be a gear tank check for tanks. He does, unfortunately, check the armor value of uh, shadow priests and to a degree holy priests and also any squishy classes. I died several times as a shadow priest. I wasn't making much progress, so I took the cue from someone on the WoW forums who actually healed him to death as their resto druid. And I decided to go for the healing to death option because he was just doing too much damage for me to keep up with as a shadow priest. I wasn't doing enough damage versus the damage he was doing to me. So this works out quite well. You just smite him, make sure that you have the uh, offensive chakra active and uh, yeah, just heal him to death. Nuke him down with whatever you can and for the rest of the time, just heal yourself and you should have no problem with it. I took him down the very first time doing this method. Uh, it is very time consuming though, and I'm gonna times eight the rest of this fight. It's at times four right now, because this takes like at least 10 minutes real time to get this done. Gortog is dead, head up the stairs to the left, and these will take you right back into the Halls of Anguish, just right of the door that you came in, and then head right through the gauntlet, uh, through the Shrine of Lost Souls, where these spirit adds just run right through and then DPS at the very end, don't try to do it midway through because they will respawn. And now we're at the Reliquary of Souls. So the first boss here, the Essence of Suffering is an absolute face roll. He does a Aura of Suffering, which reduces health regeneration and armor by 100%, and reduces defense by 500%. So, he doesn't have any abilities here that are going to break the fight with a level 90 character. So, he just goes back in there, you kill these adds, which will restore health and mana, and then we'll be on to phase two, which is the most difficult phase of this fight. Phase one and three are basically phase rolls. So now, the Essence of Desire. This one is a tricky one. So, she does the Aura of Desire, which half of the damage that you do to her is going to come right back and smack you in the face. So, I can't stress use uh, Power Word Shield enough for this fight. And heal yourself as much as you can, uh, or... Actually, don't heal yourself as much as you can. Use the bubble as much as you can, because it's uh, also going to reduce your mana pool by 5% every 8 seconds, which means that by just over 2 minutes into the fight, you're not going to be able to do anything except hit her in the face with your staff. So, you want to balance the uh, DPS and the healing. I recommend using Power Word Shield as much as you can, using your instant cast heals to uh, supplement it. Try to stay in shadow form, do as much damage as quickly as you can. This particular phase is just all about balance for a Shadow Priest. And if you just follow that, then down she goes. Finally, we have the Essence of Anger. He is, like I said before, he is a tank and spank fight. Just DPS him as much as you can. He uh, did have an ability that, for level appropriate groups, would be significantly dangerous. He does damage every three seconds. It goes up by 100 every three seconds. But thankfully, we're able to DPS him down so quickly that that's not a problem. And also, we have hundreds of thousands of health. So, next we have the 
Next we have Illidan's Harem. That's basically what it is. No, Illidan's Brothel. So, we go through the uh, Den of Mortal Desires, as it's called, and I'm just going to skip through most of the trash here. And that brings us to Mother Shiraz. Mother Shiraz, by comparison to the last two bosses, is a simple tank and spank. So, she will silence you uh, every now and then. She'll also hit you fairly hard in the face with those uh, four swords that she's got there. But it's nothing you can't handle. And once she is down, you will get your tier six shoulders. And now that Mother Shiraz is down, we uh, head through the Blood Elf area, which is the Grand Promenade. I've skipped through that just to save time. And we're now in the Chamber of Command with the Illidari Council, which is arguably for the Shadow Priest the toughest boss in the instance. So these guys are four different characters. They have shared health, and they're basically modeled after four different character classes. There's a paladin, there's a rogue, there's a priest, and there is a mage. So the strategy for this fight, step one, don't panic, don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> step two, don't get frustrated when you die, because <laughs> you'll probably die a lot. Hopefully not so much with my advice here. Um, so, first of all, keep in mind they have shared health. So all four of these guys share health, so if you're going to just single target DPS the Paladin, you'll have to do it for four times the amount of health that he actually has there. Next, the Priest does a Circle of Healing, which will heal all the targets for the damage they've taken, which is a pain. She heals for a lot. But keep in mind that you can out DPS the amount that she heals for, so I would recommend just ignoring the Circle of Healing. You can't interrupt it but I wouldn't bother because there's too much going on in the fight. You need to keep your dots up on all four targets, so your Shadow Word Pain is what I would recommend. I would not recommend Vampiric Touch for all four targets because that requires cast time, and that cast time is better used on... Uh, <laughs> that's more better used on Mind Blasts and on Mind Seers and AoE and all that wonderful stuff. So, do at least keep Vampiric Touch on two targets, if possible. If not, just the Paladin. Um, and yeah, just follow your regular DPS rotation when you can, get the Devouring Plague, and then use your Mind Flay. Only use Mind Flay when you have Devouring Plague up, otherwise use Mind Seer. Try to keep them grouped together as much as possible, because then your, then your AoE attack will do a lot more, and these guys are basically like a four-headed monster. If you can hit all four of them at once with a Mind Seer, then that's going to help you out so much more. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, Body and Soul Talent for Power Word Shield. Pop a Power Word Shield every single time there's AoE flying at you, you'll move 60% as fast. So basically like you're mounted. <laughs> and you'll be able to get the hell out and dodge, because that AoE will hit you for a lot. And apart from that, just... Uh, Use the talents, uh, use the heals rather, that'll uh, keep you in shadow form. So, uh, if necessary, pop out a shadow form. And yeah, just keep on your toes. Be aware of the situation, and you should get them down eventually. I won't say you won't have any trouble, you probably will. I believe this took me like 10 or more tries. But good news is, they will get you your uh, tier 6 pants. And then next is Illidan, and if you know the mechanics of Illidan, it is not nearly as difficult. So for the Illidan fight here, I have it on times four once again. The only part of this fight that you need to worry about is the Flames of Azanoth, and I will show you what happens if you do it wrong, <laughs> which I was doing for quite a bit of time until I figured out this particular mechanic. So the first phase right here, you DPS him. It's not that bad. He hits kind of hard because he's the last boss and he's got those two blades. And then Whoa, your health just goes down like crazy to those flames of Azimov. So, what happens is, those things hit harder the further they are away from the blades. They are tethered to the blades, so if you're very close to the blades, then they do less damage. If you're further away, they do more damage. So, 
are doing the same thing here, and Illidan looks a little ridiculous with his uh, fighting at times four speed here, but uh, yeah, he's going to drop those again. And there's the Flames of Avicenoth again. And look at how little damage they're doing to me this time. It's a fraction of what they were doing before, and that's because of the positioning. So, just stay on top of the girder until the uh, Flames of Azanoth phase. Once you've killed the Flames of Azanoth, you can just go wherever you like. And that's literally the only hard thing in this fight. Apart from that, it's just a straight tank and spank. There used to be more phases, there used to be more challenges, but you just simply hit them too hard now, so that's pretty much it. And he's dead now. And you get your uh, tier 6 chest piece. So, I hope you found this guide helpful, guys. Um, let me know in the comments section below if you want to see another class. I'll do what I can. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And I'll see you guys next time.